All right, and welcome to um, SU2 presentation on the War of 1812, America's Second Battle for Independence. So we talked a little bit about the causes of the War of 1812, including the impressment of American sailors into, into the British Navy, the British and their aid to Native Americans throughout the Midwest, uh, basically to get them to attack the United States. And we talked about Jefferson's response to the Embargo Act, meaning that we would not trade with any country in the world, uh, basically keeping our merchant ships sitting in the bays in America, so therefore our sailors could not be impressed in the British service. That didn't work out too well, so we changed it to a non-intercourse act, the idea was we just wouldn't trade with France or Great Britain until their war was over. Native Americans and the British. Well, the British encouraged Native Americans to fight here in uh, the United States. The idea was if we could get them, uh, or if the British could get them to fight the Americans, that they would keep the Americans so preoccupied that America would not be able to aid or help France too much in the War of 1812. We talked a little bit about Tecumseh and his relationship with the British at the Battle of uh, Tippecanoe in present-day Indiana. All right, so to start this war off, the United States is going to be at a huge disadvantage in the War of 1812. These things leading up to the War of 1812 kind of thrust the United States into war. The young members of Congress who were very excited about the idea, the War Hawks, uh, thought it would be an easy war to win, but the naval components really make a difference. The British Navy had over or had hundreds of ships, you know, ships that had been built for a long time during the colonial period. I mean, Britain was the leading navy in the world. In contrast, the U.S. only had about 20 ships. The good thing for the, um, the United States was a lot of the British ships were spread throughout the world at this point in history. So the first fight takes place at Fort Detroit. Uh, it's a British victory. In fact, Tecumseh and the British together uh, fought to, to win this victory for the British. Here's some pictures of, or artist renditions of Fort Detroit. So Canada, which was a part of Britain at this time, um, was also a, a huge focus. The Great Lakes region is a big part of the War of 1812, including Lake Erie, which was control, controlled by the British. The first American hero of the War of 1812 is Admiral Oliver Hazard Perry, and uh, he was most famous for defeating the British on Lake Erie, which promoted the Americans to be able to push into Canada and defeat the British at the Battle of the Thames River. Uh, Tecumseh passes away in this battle, and as you'll learn in the next series, it's a big deal because when Tecumseh passes away, some Native Americans become very upset, and in fact one group, the Creek tribe, is going to start their own war in the southeastern United States as a result, uh, but others are going to lay down their arms, and, you know, they've lost their leader, and it's just, you know, almost a complete and total moral defeat. All right, this has been... Uh, the, the beginnings of the War of 1812 in four minutes or less. Hope you have a great rest of the day.